Howdy, this is Sailor the Piper Man, Piper the Sailor Man, coming to you from the beautiful island of Puerto Rico. Season's greeting. Merry Christmas. And we're all in an expectation because such a time as this, somewhere in the past, almost 2,000 years ago, Savior was born. He was called Emmanuel. That being said, I want to tell a story. What I can... I'm here with a beautiful Nording pipe that and some black Cavendish, a little sweet value pack. It's put out by um, um, Pipes and Cigars, and and that pipe, because it's, it's so moist, and syrupy, I let it, I let it sit, I open it up, so now it's really nice and it burns. I cut my hair, getting warm. So I want to tell a story, but before I tell the story, my I lost one of my dogs. Midnight little black dog. He went home. My 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 uh, three other dogs were really sad, and I don't know. I couldn't pick, pick him up or bury him. My wife had to do it. And my daughter was good enough, enough to bury it in his backyard, in her backyard. And I was numb. I couldn't, um, couldn't function. Sat there thinking about it. This was a dog that was always with me. Sat on my shoulders. Walked. I fed him slept with me and when you lose a a dog is so different than like when a human being dies sometimes it could be even more profound because usually in, in this day and age when a when a dog dies like that it's a lot of mistreatment a lot of abuse well, my dog was very old, at a very old age, and um, was a wonderful dog. And I used to have him up in the mountains. You know, right now I can't even, I can't even think. I have to look at the pictures. Kind of numb me. So now I have three, and people talking me out of not getting a, another dog. But isn't that the cycle of life? Somebody dies and somebody's reborn and with the other dog, a new dog, new puppy dog, keep me keep the other dogs interested, you know? You can a puppy brings the energy and you get to see it grow. And you get to see him loving and, and, and you can instruct them. And I have a little father left in me. Father me, so I'm I'm thinking about it. I got three dogs. I'm uh my dogs are right now getting getting around. But uh, midnight was special because he was roused about. You know anybody came near the house, he was always ready. You know? My dogs are getting old right now, and um, I, I'm I'm still young enough to train a dog and raise and hope. But once you reach a certain age, man, I just can't see myself being without a dog. I love dogs, you know. So that was my sad situation that happened on Saturday and Sunday. 
I'll leave. You know what? I'll leave the whole thing when we get closer to Christmas. I'll come back and tell that story. Well, on Sunday, going back to Sunday, my dog died Saturday. On Sunday, my daughter got sick. We didn't know what it was, and my wife took her to the hospital. And she was practically all there in the ER, poor child. They, they did a CT scan, they did uh, the blood workups, urinalysis. Well, she had stones. So she had some big stones. So it needed to be operated. So, since my wife worked, I went to the hospital. I was with my daughter for close to 40 hours or more. Spend the night over there. They allowed me to spend the night. It was in the same room and we got to talking and I got to reading the Bible to her. And we had a good uh, father and daughter talk that we hadn't talked in a long time. And when they operated her, you're about to go in, you know, they do the prepping. So I was able to go in the room and help her prep, get dressed and everything. I prayed for her. And then all of a sudden, I see her praying on her own. And she said she went in and she prayed and they gave her the anesthesia. And she woke up praying. You know, I got to see my daughter's faith in action. She prayed. I was like, isn't this great? You know, that, that the message all these years and the training all these years and and, and, and speaking the gospel to my children, it kicked in. It made me feel so good that my daughter is a believer, you know? On her own, not that, oh, I gotta take her to church. I was never like that, I was never pushy with my kids, forcing them to church and everything. But through my example that she saw, through the, the, the things I taught her, about life, the reality, what was sin, what is the concept of the world, love, how God loves, and compassion. You know, that was able to, she was able to grasp onto that. And she believed, because she seen miracles. She seen me change, slowly but surely. You know, the guy I am now, that you guys see and sometimes you say, oh, he's a great guy and everything. I wasn't always a great guy. You know, I was tough. I was in the military. You know, you came at me the wrong way, you was going to get it. You know? <laughs> I mean, I was friendly and everything. But I, I was living life with my guard up. Didn't trust too many people. But slowly, as I began reading the Word and believing in God, trusting in God, you know, I pray, God, take this anger away from me. Take the root of bitterness out of me, you know. I forgive, I said in my prayers, I forgive all those that done things to me, you know. When you carry a burden and, 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 and you... You know, I didn't want to. I don't want to get old and be this gripey old man and grungy and and uh, revenge. You want to get even. You know, I didn't want to live like that anymore. I didn't want to live like thinking about my past and thinking about who done me wrong. I, I let it go. Sometimes you gotta let it go. What's the old saying? Let it go and let God. You know, you, sometimes you got you get cheated out of money, or somebody think you're weak and, and, and they manipulate you and abuse you and take money from you, whether it be a business transaction or where, or say somebody, some, somebody says something about you and it's not true. Sometimes people get their name slandered and, and you have to build up your reputation, you know? And, and we have to be careful because the things we do 
sometimes can be a curse for our children. You, you, you ever come across somebody that says, oh, well, he's a Franklin. He's from that Franklin family. They're always in trouble. Their grandpa and his great-grandson is just like him. You know, somebody said he's a Hatfield McCoy, whatever they call it. Oh, those are trouble people. And then you get judged for something your great-grandparents did or your grandma did or some bill was left unpaid. And so your your reputation is tarnished because somebody else in your family did something. So you got to be wise, you know. And I... I I thank the good Lord that, that I've been careful like that and I, I'm not a disgrace or an embarrassment to my children. That's the last thing you want to do. You want to be an embarrassment to your children and that's your legacy? That's what you're leaving behind? You know, I want to leave behind the fact, I ain't going to die anytime soon, but I'm saying I want to leave behind the fact that that I would try the best to be a man of God, a man of prayer, a man of principle. They know I, I love my country. They know I'm a patriot. But most important that I want to leave is that I was always truthful for them, that I was always God-fearing, you know, and that I always treated other people. Though I could get angry at somebody for doing something to me, I was always had a forgiving heart. And that I was loyal. And, um, you know, so I, I was able to get around and meet other people, look at other people. Hmm? Things, things are happening around the world. But then things sometimes we forget. We look around. Who can you bless this Christmas? Who can you show compassion to this Christmas? Maybe it's buying a turkey for somebody. Buying something for somebody. Sending them a postcard. Hey. Tis the season. Sailor the Piper Man, Piper the Sailor Man. Stay positive, be positive, and I love you guys.